What's up, Titans fans? It's your boy C to the D back again with another episode of Tighten Up Today. Today's episode is all about the NFL Week 12 Pick'ems. That's right. Usually I would give it to you on a Saturday, had some things come up, but I'm here today, Sunday. You need your Pick'ems, and we're going to bring you all your Pick'ems. I'll also bring you a quick injury report. You'll also get at the end of this my bold prediction for Week 12. Indianapolis Colts, Tennessee Titans, cannot wait to bring you this. But no need to delay. Let's get down to it. All right, let's go ahead and jump straight into injuries. Obviously, it's a big issue this week with COVID and everything else going on, but our injury report looks like this. Cornerback Adoree Jackson with a knee did not participate is out. Adam Humphreys continues to struggle with his concussion, limited in practice, and is out for this week's matchup. Tight end Mike Cole Pruitt with a knee, limited in practice and out. Offensive guard Roger Saffold with an ankle did not participate all week and is out as well. Center Ben Jones with his knee did not participate, but is questionable looking for him to actually start this matchup this week against the Colts. The Colts injury report looks like this. Linebacker Bobby Okariki is out with an ankle injury. He did not participate in practice this week. Center Ryan Kelly with the neck did not participate and is questionable for this matchup. Offensive guard Quentin Nelson with his back. Wide receiver Zach Pascal with a knee and quarterback Phillip Rivers with his toe were all limited participants and are questionable for this matchup. Linebacker Anthony Walker with his ribs as well as safety Kyrie Willis were full participants of practice and are showing questionable for this match. All right, so that's the injury report. Now we're going to jump into these pickums for this week's matchups. Before we do that, let's look at the standings real quick. As we can see here, the Jake Witt 107 wins. Had a little bit of a stumble last week, only winning seven games. He's now at a 107 and 54. CD brings it up just a little bit. Three games back now at 104 and 57. Courtney's at 100 wins, 61 losses. A Town finds last place tied with Lund. Lund is slowly again creeping up, and he's only four games out of third place now. Both A Town and Lund tied 96. To 65 with a 596 win loss percentage. We'll see how this all turns out coming down the stretch. But right now, let's get into these ball games. First game that we have up: Las Vegas Raiders at six and four, traveling to Atlanta to play the three and seven Atlanta Falcons. This matchup should be a good one. I'm thinking high scoring inside the dome should be a fun one to watch. Right now, Las Vegas is favored to win this game by three points. The over under is 54, and uh, I have Atlanta to win this match 23 to 16. Again, I think it should be high flying, but all the same, I have a feeling that Atlanta just stumbles all over themselves just moving forward into this matchup. But they do find a way to win this game again. 23 to 16 should be an interesting game to watch. All right, next up, Los Angeles Chargers. Three and seven, not too good. And they're reciprocal, the seven and three Buffalo Bills. Playing at home, Buffalo is favored to win by five and a half points. The over under is 53 points. And I am showing Buffalo to win this game 31 to 27. Look for a lot of Stephon Diggs. A lot, a lot, a lot of Stephon Diggs after taking that loss in overtime. I'm sorry, not in overtime. On that Hail Mary to AZ. It seemed like it was months ago, but just expect a lot from him. All right, next up, the New York Giants. Three and seven, horrible team. NFC least, as we all know, but they're playing an even worse opponent in the Cincinnati Bengals, who are two, seven, and one. They were already hurting. But now they're really hurting with no Joe Burrow. They'll come out there with Mr. Finley. I don't know if he's even a quarterback in the NFL. Who knows? He'll be out there. He'll get the start. New York Giants favored by six points. The over-under is 43. I have the Giants to win this. How do they not? They win this game 23-17 to 17 and are in tied for the first place after this with the Washington football team. Oh, my God. Miserable. All right. Carolina next up. Four and seven. They're, again, hurt everywhere. They're hurt. But Minnesota comes in at 4-6. and six. They're doing well, but coming off this surprising loss to the Cowboys last week. Don't even know what to say about that. But Minnesota, 3.5 point over. I'm sorry, 3.5 point favorite to win this. <clears throat> the over-under is 51. I have Minnesota to win this game 20-17. to 17. Arizona's the next game up. The little guy, the fast guy. Comes in, Kyler Murray, 6-4 and four with his squad. The New England Patriots outdoors in the fall. Coming up close to December, it's going to be a cold one, a chilly one. New England at 4-6, and six, playing at home. They are the underdog. Arizona's favored currently by 2.5 points. The over-under is 49.5, and, and I have New England to win this matchup. Bill gets these guys ready in the cold. You have a dome team coming out up northeast. New England wins. 23-20 to 20 should be a good game all the way down to the end. 
No Hail Mary this time, though. No Hail Mary. Miami next up, 6-4, and four, traveling up north to play the New York Jets, who are 0-10. Zero wins on the season. Miami's favored to win by 7. 44.5 over under. We all have Miami to win this game. 23-13, to 13, and this should not be a good game to watch at all. Very sloppy. Speaking of sloppy, all those Thursday games on Thanksgiving, absolutely miserable. Bad teams playing. We knew that. Bad. Just bad football all the way around. Maybe I'm a little bit butthurt because I lost both my games. But anyways, it's bad football. Next up, Cleveland. Cleveland at 7-3 traveled to Jacksonville. Jacksonville is 1-9. Cleveland, favored to win this game by 6.5 points. The over-under is 50 points, as you can see here. They all like Cleveland. I like Jacksonville. I think Jacksonville pulls this out. 26-23 to in a tough matchup. Mike Glennon comes out. Haven't seen him forever since he played for the Bucks, but he's going to be out. Gets a start for Jags. I think he gets the win this week. Next up, New Orleans Saints at 8 and 2, travel to Denver, the Mile High City, to play the 4 and 6 Denver Broncos, who just come off of a win against Miami Dolphins last week. Another dome team traveling up north, a warm team going up north to play in Denver. New Orleans favored to win by six. Over under is 43 and a half. I have Denver to shock the world going. A home, they're home again. They're cold, but they're all at the same time. If they even play a game, we'll see. They win this game 27 to 24. Expect a good game all the way down. And I like Jerry Judy's finally starting to come back. Wait for that team to come up. San Francisco 4 and 9 ers again inching a little bit closer to 4 and 9 in actuality as they are 4 and 6 coming into LA. The Rams 7 and 3. Favorite to win this game by six and a half points. The over-under is currently 45 points. I have LA to win this game 31 to 20. And the guy that's in the middle is kind of confused here. A-Town, he's a 49ers fan, so don't judge him too harsh. Anyways, Kansas City is the next one up. Nine and one. That one loss again coming to Las Vegas way back in the day. Tampa Bay not looking too good playing anybody that's worth a dang. Um, playing on the same football surface. They're 7-4. and four. Kansas City currently favored to win by 3.5 points. That's it. The over-under is 56 total points. I have Kansas City to win this game 34-23. to 23. Should not be really a good game. I think it'll be hyped up to be, but it won't be. I don't think it'll match that, but we'll see. Kansas City wins this game. Chicago, the pretenders, after taking a break. Again, I know we heard they lost to the bye last week. So sad. But anyway, Chicago at 5-5 five and five gets a Sunday night football game. Somehow they keep getting all these primetime games. Don't know why. They definitely don't deserve it. 5-5 five and five going to play Green Bay at Lambeau. They're 7-3 and three in this matchup. Green Bay coming off of a crazy loss to the Colts last week in OT. Losing by a field goal. Should have won that game about four different times throughout the game. Lost it. They're favored to win this game, though, by 8.5 points. The over-under is 45 I have Green Bay to win this game, 27 to 19. Chicago, just not enough bullets, not enough firepower to beat this team. Even after a bye week, not enough, definitely not enough. And Mitch Trubisky, congratulations on getting set, and then now you're the starter again. Good luck. Monday Night Football is Seattle. The Seattle Seahawks at 7-3 and three play the Philadelphia Eagles from the NFC Least. They're currently 3-6-1. Seattle is favored to win this game. Obviously, they're favored to win by five. The over-under is 50, and we all have Seattle to win this game easily. 30 to 20 is what I have. All right, so Tuesday night football. We haven't seen this in a very long time, but it's back. Tuesday night football, Baltimore Ravens, Pittsburgh Steelers. Baltimore comes in at six and four and needing a win. They got lucky. This game was supposed to be on Thursday. COVID struck. They... The NFL blessed them and pushed them back to play on Monday, and then they put or play on Sunday. Then they pushed them back again to play on Tuesday. So they're getting a little bit more time to rest, a little bit more time to obviously get COVID free on that side. This is going to be a good game. I'm looking forward to it. The Steelers are 10 0, still undefeated at this point. The last team that's alive. Pittsburgh's favorite to win this game at home by four points. The over under is 45. I don't think Baltimore can lose again. Not right now. Not after losing to us, not after losing to the, I believe they lost to the Colts prior to that. They just can't keep losing to all these teams. I think now is the time that they win and the Steelers 10 or undefeated streak <clears throat> comes to an end. 10 and 1 looks better on them. Anyway, Baltimore wins 24 to 20. Now, the game that we all cared about came to see. Tennessee Titans traveling to Indianapolis, I believe, anyways. This is the, the next best game on the schedule. 
Um, Baltimore versus Pittsburgh is a really good game. And then Tennessee, our game, obviously, two division rivals going head-to-head -head to figure out the AFC South leader. This is it. We get to redeem ourselves in a rematch. Right now, we're 7-3. and three. They're 7-3. and three. Both of us tied for the lead in the AFC South, but only one will be a top after this match. Indy's favored to win this game by 3.5. The over-under is 51.5 points. As you can see here, this is what my crew believes. And then I'll tell you what the truth is. What it is, Tennessee wins 31 to 20. This game is going to be not as good as the last one. I think that the way that the last game kind of unfolded in third and fourth quarter was special teams. Special teams will not be a factor this time around. We get the lead early and we keep it often throughout. Expect a ton, a ton, a ton of Derrick Henry. King Henry gets the ball at least 25 times plus. Um, Bobby Okereke being out for this game is significant, and I think that that hurts their team moving forward. All right, you guys, so now I've gone through all the games for this week, including the Tuesday night football game. Should be a good one, but now it's time for my bowl prediction. That's right, bowl prediction coming to you right now. It's week 12 in the bowl prediction. Well, before we go into my week 12 bowl prediction, let's take a look at what I said for week 11. Derrick Henry is the man rushing for two touchdowns. We're only going to score two touchdowns. Remember that. Two touchdowns, two field goals by the Titans. He gets both of them on the ground. We are going to pound it, pound it, pound it for 60 minutes straight. As much as we can run Derrick Henry, I say he gets the ball probably 30 times or more this game. And that last touchdown will be a one of those long Derrick Henry touchdowns to win and seal this game late for us before the Goskowski field goal. Week 11 was not exactly too far off, but it was definitely wrong. 130 plus yards, there's a ton of yards on the ground and the touchdowns. My, my man Derrick Henry was almost there, almost there, but definitely not 202, got it. But this week, totally different week. Week 12 is here. We got the Colts again, lost to him in week 10. And the way that we really lost that was because they just nickeled and dimed us, just nickeled and dimed us the entire game going for it on fourth down. But my bold prediction this week, I got it. Here's my bold prediction. Phillip Rivers throws two interceptions. Now this guy, if you look now, he's already thrown 14 touchdowns to eight interceptions. That ratio is not a good look at all for an NFL quarterback. And I believe it's time for him to throw not one, but two picks. The offensive line, although it's really good, I think that we put a lot of pressure on him. And all the same, he throws two interceptions. Expect that. All right, so I've given you all the game predictions. I've given you the injury report. I've also given you a bold prediction for this week's matchup. Tighten up is going to be a great weekend for our Titans. The Colts, they got to take this loss, and we have to take this lead. I cannot wait to watch this game. But if you like this episode and any other episode in the past, click the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel. And also click that notifications bell. Get notified the next time I upload another episode of Tighten Up Today, which will actually be later on today. But before you leave, I got one question for you. Why Tighten Up Tomorrow when you can tighten up today?